Hello again. Today we're going to talk about cassette tapes. I love cassette tapes. I have a lot of cassette tapes. This isn't even all of them. But a lot of people think they're useless, they're worthless, antiquated, dead media. But you'd be surprised. A lot of these tapes are, are worth more than you would think. Um, I love them just as a format in general. I've always loved them. I love how they look on display and these Napa Valley racks. Love them. So let's show you 10 of the most valuable cassettes in my collection. Starting with one of my favorite bands, a band from Australia called Severed Heads. They were an industrial noise band uh, from the 80s. They continued far beyond the 80s, but uh, they started off as really noisy. And this is their one of their first releases, Severed Heads Blubber Knife Cassette. This uh, came out in 1984 out of the UK. Sells for around $75 at the most uh, from what I could find online. Really great stuff though. Repetitive, noisy, irritating, beautiful stuff. All right, next. This is a really cool one. Another one of my favorite bands in the world, Zig Zig Sputnik. In 1986, they released their cassette in this bubble pa uh, blister pack format with the hangy thing here. So it would hang on a rack like that. And you would go to, go to the store and pick it up. And this is totally sealed. This sells for 50 to 75 bucks. I would say that might even fetch more in this condition. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool, huh? Zig Zig Sputnik, uh, incredible synth pop, uh, a band that started using sampling for their pop music more than most other pop bands and uh, great stuff, one of my faves. And just as a side note, this record, the album version was also released in this cool dis a display box, uh, kind of like a toy. Uh, you can Google that and check it out. But yeah, this uh, Zig Zig Sputnik Flaunt It album from 1986 in the UK on cassette, worth about 75 bucks uh, if you're lucky to find it. Next is this little cassette right here from 1984 called Breakmaster. Breakmaster. Uh, it's got the New York City Breakers, uh, I guess, on it, breaking, on cassette. I don't know. It's a bunch of uh, hip-hop stuff. Uh, good for breakdancing, I assume. This one, uh, again, 1984. You can find this sometimes for about 75 bucks in uh, probably sealed or mint condition. Pretty good. This Frankie Goes to Hollywood cassette box set is next. 1985, released in Canada. Three cassette pack. Now check this out. See if I can remember how to open this. Okay, so here we go. So you open it like this, right? And you have this, the band. And then inside here, inside the box, let me be very careful here. Three cassettes inside the box. Uh, this came out in 1985, I said, in Canada, like I said, and um, it's pretty. If I can get it shut here, there's the back of it. Their little bang equation. So, yeah, this sells for 75 or higher if you can find it in this beautiful condition. Frankie goes Hollywood. Next. Another boxed cassette set. This one from singer of Devo, Mark Mothersbaugh. This was a cassette set he released in 1985 in Japan. Uh, music inspired by and or for his art shows that he was doing at the time. Comes with a cassette right there, the gold cassette. You can see it's metallic gold. And a set of Mark Mothersbaugh playing cards. And this happens to be sealed, this set here. Uh, but there you have it. A nice box set from Mark Mothersbaugh. Again, 1985 Japan. This sells from anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks, depending on condition. This is a real nice condition. I also have a sealed uh, copy of this, totally uh, sealed in the archives somewhere. But there you have it. Mark Mothersbaugh's Music for Insomniacs on cassette. Next, we have more brutal brutal industrial music this from controlled bleeding 
1985 release, an industrial band from New York. This release is called Shit Slipper. It was only released on cassette in this little baggie. And uh, let me show you the cassette itself. Blank black cassette, no writing on it, no graphics. And the little piece of paper that came with this uh, thing here. This opens up into some things. And uh, there's the back. Now this uh, goes for between 40 and 100 bucks if you can find it. I've never seen another copy of it besides this one. And I love control bleeding. Uh, they're early stuff, real noisy, real repetitive, just like, like I like it, irritating. They did uh, go on to do some more um, kind of dance beat driven stuff, but the early stuff is my favorite. So there's control bleeding. Moving right along, Mortiskald, a death metal band. Uh, this tape is from Poland in 1993. Dying Remains is the name of the album. Very hard to find this uh, import version of this metal cassette. 100 bucks is what you could probably find to pay for this in this kind of mint condition. Mortiskald. I love me some death metal. Don't even get me started. Okay. Here we have an interesting portion of this video. These cassettes, I'm kind of presenting as one, one item because they're, they're related in more ways than one. These two cassettes here, this one by Jeff Leopard called Bitches Die Tour 1984 Live at the Yellow Rose, a punk club I used to go to when I was a teenager. Jeff Leopard featured members of Anti-Scene. It was kind of a joke band they did on the side and um, this was the band that inspired me to start a band. It was so bad and so simple that I thought, well, I could do that. So there's the, uh, there's the spine, Jeff Leopard Live 84. And related to this is this Joe Young cassette. He, uh, rest in peace, Joe Young, was also an anti-scene, an original member. He released this uh, solo cassette uh, back in, uh, I believe it was 1984 or 5, something like that. This was obviously 84. Um, these two cassettes are not listed anywhere on Discogs. They're so rare. Uh, I've never seen another copy of either of these. So I don't know how much these are worth, but I would reckon that they would fetch $100 uh, to some extreme anti-scene collector, maybe even more. Again, I've never seen other copies of these two beauties. So that was kind of a an honorable mention kind of thing because I don't know how much these are worth, but I'm, I'm suspecting $100 or more. And I'm a big anti-scene fan, so of course I would, I would expect that. All right, the final two most valuable cassettes in my collection. Maybe surprising to some of you, might not. This, these two cassettes are related to a band called Ben Folds Five, starring, of course, Ben Folds from North Carolina. Uh, he used to come to parties at my house uh, when I was in college. We had kind of this big party house in the 80s and uh, uh, he, he was seen there at least a couple times and I think that's where I got these cassettes. Now these are the, is the band that he was in before um, Ben Folds 5 called, called Majosha. Uh, Majosha. Uh, yeah, and um, Party Night was their first EP on cassette and Shut Up and Listen to Majosha. Maj Majosha, <laughs> I always get that wrong. Uh, that was their second one. Uh, this one was 1988. This one's 1989. Whoops, 1989. So uh, it's like, you know, uh, funky pop uh, indie rock. You know, it's uh, I have a soft spot for this stuff because I just, I listened to it so much in the 80s after he, uh, he I think, left these at our house or gave these to us. Um, anyway, it's pretty surprising. This cassette right here has... Uh, been recorded as selling for $300, between $120 and $300 for this Majosha cassette. Now, this one has never been listed as selling on Discogs. Uh, a lot of people want it. And there is one on sale right now, if you want it, for $25,000. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever going to pay that. But I would assume this one's worth $300 or more, judging from the value of this one. And I have them both. And I like them. So it would take a lot to uh, get these away from me. Uh, there you have it. 
And if you didn't know cassettes were valuable, now you know at least 10 or 11 of them are valuable. And I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, stay tuned for more videos from my sick collection of music and pop culture. I like you. Keep watching. Thanks a lot.